All right, we're gonna continue with Judy Moody. We have our er, perk, term, germ, our long E, cheese, bleed, creep, our E-A-R, smear, clear, swear, and our E-E-R, smear, sheer, cheer. You're tested tomorrow, make sure you've been studying. All right, I'm gonna add another vocabulary word and it's creative. Remember we had create, which means to make. Creative, it's a describing word. So create is the verb that means that you're actually doing it. If you create something, you make something. If you're being creative, it's a way to describe somebody who's good at coming up with original ideas. All right, let's continue with Judy Moody by Megan McDonald. Project Pencil. The next morning and the next one after that, Judy woke up feeling like a sloth moth. She could hardly make herself get out of bed. Saving the world was not going well. She hadn't done anything really important, like heal the world with her own crazy strip. So far, she'd only saved four banana peels, a lunch bag, and a toad. On Friday morning, Judy ate her, non, her, non, her no garbage breakfast in silence. She packed her no garbage lunch by herself. She didn't say a word when Stink stuck crazy strips all over his arms, elbows, knees, and chin. <coughs> These crazy strips itch, said Stink, peeling off one off his elbow. Judy couldn't stand it one more minute. If those were my crazy strips, said Judy, I'd be happy to itch. I would not scratch even once, and I would not ever, not ever peel it off, not even in the bathtub. And here's a picture of them eating breakfast, and boy, Judy looks unhappy. In school, Judy did not raise her hand once. She did not pass a note to Frank. She did nothing but chew her grouchy pencil all through spelling. She, Judy Moody, was in a pencil snapping mood. When it was time for science, Mr. Todd took off his watch and said, I want everybody to sit still for 60 seconds. I'll time you. When the minute was up, <coughs> Mr. Todd said, in that minute, 100 acres of trees in the rainforest were just, just destroyed. That's 70 football fields. <coughs> no way went through the class. We all depend on the rainforest, said Mr. Todd, for things we eat and wear and use every single day. Think about it. Even your wooden pencil and rubber eraser could be from the rainforest. 98% of the cedar wood used for pencils comes from rainforests. Judy stopped chewing on her grouchy pencil. She stared at it. The grouchy face looked even grouchier. This pencil used to be a tree, a rainforest tree. She, Judy Moody, would never ever use a pencil again. Not even a grouchy pencil. If we help save the rainforest, we help save the planet, said Mr. Todd. Suddenly, Judy had a plan, a perfect save the world plan. All she had to do was skip recess. When all the kids hurried outside to the playground, Judy sneaked back to the classroom. This was her big chance. Inside each desk was a pencil holder. Judy raced around the room and took the pencils from each desk. Then she hid them inside a flower vase. As soon as recess was over, it was time for math. Take out your workbook, said Mr. Todd. Let's get those pencils working. Uh-oh, Judy thought. Hey, my pencil's gone. Mine too. Mine was right here. Mr. Todd, Mr. Todd, somebody stole our pencils. The whole class was in an uproar. Okay, is somebody playing a joke, asked Mr. Todd. Nobody answered. Do any of you know anything about the missing pencils? Judy just kept her head down and pretended to work out her math problems. Brad looked at Judy. She was the only one not complaining about her missing pencil. And she was doing her math problems with a P-E-N. Pencil thief, Brad yelled, pointing at her. Judy Moody stole our pencils. And here's a picture of her of her working with her pen and the class is upset. Judy felt the eyes of 21 third grade pencil lovers turn to glare at her. Judy, Mr. Ty came over to her desk. What do you know about these missing pencils? Okay, I took them, Judy confessed, because I think we should stop using pencils. Stop using pencils? That's nuts, Brad said. To help save the rainforest, said Judy. Hmm, class, what do you think, asked Mr. Todd. We just want our pencils back, said Leo. Judy could not believe these third grade pencil freaks. Were they in the ozone? Didn't they care that 70 football fields a minute were being cut down? She wished they would all move to Pennsylvania. I think we should save the rainforest, said Frank. Me too, said Haley. Me three, said Rocky. Yeah, but we can't just give up pencils forever, said Randy. We have to write stuff in a race like in math. How can we save the world without math? 
Maybe we don't have to use so many, said Jessica Finch. One pencil can draw a line 35 miles long. We could all promise to use the same pencil until fifth grade. How did Jessica Think Finch know so much about pencils? Maybe she wasn't such a think after all. How many pencils can you get from a tree, Judy asked. None, said Brad. Pencils don't grow on trees. Hardy har har, said Judy. I mean it. You can get a lot of pencils from one tree for real. One tree can make 172,000 pencils, said Jessica Finch. I read it in my Ranger Rick magazine. Wow, one tree can make all the pencils in our school? All the pencils in Virginia. We could plant a tree in the rainforest then, said Judy. You know, for the Virginia Dare School to make up for all the pencils we use. Kids all over the world could raise money to protect rainforests, Jessica told the class. It only costs a dollar to have one tree planted in the children's rainforest in Costa Rica. If it only costs a dollar, Judy said, then we could send money for them to plant trees and our class can adopt them. Wow, everybody said, let's do it. Class, any ideas about how to raise some money, Mr. Todd asked. How about a car wash, said Lucy. We could sell stuff, said Adam, like cookies. And here, they've got lots of pictures around the page. My sister put on a play in fifth grade and made money to help save the whales, said Jessica. She even won a giraffe award for it. A giraffe award for somebody who sticks their neck out for a good cause. Judy could hardly wait till fifth grade. Maybe we could put on a magic show, said Rocky, or we could collect a bunch of stuff to recycle, said Frank, and get money from it. The recycle center gives five cents for each pop bottles and milk jugs. Rare, said Judy. Double cool, said Rocky. A bottle drive sounds like a fine idea, said Mr. Todd. We could raise money while recycling at the same time. What do you say, class? Do you think we could collect enough bottles? Yeah, everybody yelled. It was settled. The Virginia Dare Class 3T was going into the bottle business, starting with their very own cafeteria. The third graders spent the afternoon rounding up milk jugs from all over the school. They piled up plastic bottles from the kindergarten classes and from the teacher's lunchroom. They even rescued some from the trash. Class 3T worked as hard as an army of leaf cutter ants. That was pretty cool how you got us out of math, whispered Frank. This is more fun than when you put my arm in a cast, said Jessica. We still need a ton more bottles if we're going to save the rainforest, said Rocky. Rocky's right, said Mr. Todd. Let's go home and see how many bottles we can collect over the weekend. Ask your family and neighbors. Tell your friends. Judy Moody felt as sharp as a pencil point. They were just a few days and a few hundred bottles away from saving the rainforest. She, Judy Moody, best mood ever. At last, she was on her way to saving the world. And the best part, she no longer had to do it all by herself. Class 3T would save the world together like an ecosystem. She, Judy Monarch Moody, knew just how a butterfly felt coming out of the chrysalis, light as a feather. And we'll read some more tomorrow. Thanks for listening.